all right what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel all aboard the ghost train yes yeah, sir it's your boy johnny ghost and today we're talking about music literacy or the lack of music literacy to be more precise um i've been thinking about how to start this video for the past couple weeks i was supposed to get it done this well let me let me let me give myself some slack i wasn't supposed to get it done but i was planning on getting it done late december but i decided to push it off so that i could collect my thoughts a little better and have a more concise and cohesive uh rant or ramble to go on for you guys today because you know I'm, I'm not really the best orator but without further ado let's talk about this problem with music literacy in today's musical zeitgeist if you want to call it that i don't really know what to call it but just the general conversation when it comes to music now what brought this to my attention and made me actually think about making this video was this tweet that i saw that pretty much said we got to find new benchmarks and referrals when it comes to this experimental music and how people talk about it basically and I'm gonna put a screenshot up so you can actually see the actual tweet and have the full context to what actually sparked this conversation. And in my reply to that tweet, it was, people don't have a dense enough music vocabulary to describe the music, so they instantly go to artistic comparisons. And I genuinely think it's a problem with uh, music literacy or just literacy as a whole. Now, real quick, I just wanna talk about personal examples. And one of these examples is uh, conversations I've had with me sharing my music or people hearing my music and coming to talk to me about it and describing it. Now, one of the main problems I've always had is that whenever I show my music or like I said, somebody comes up and describes it, they use terms such as this sounds like Tyler, the creator, or this is very underground sounding or this sounds, you know, weird off the wall, just very vague terms that don't really describe the music or describe what they hear or how they feel about the music. They just use reference points that hopefully you can understand and and uh, kind of translate that into what your music is doing for them now in the examples i'm talking about i can usually pick up on what they're putting down and i know they're usually talking about you know sample based music or rather the choice of sample that doesn't sound like your typical radio playlist song or whatever and in that conversation i can appreciate what they do have to say about my music but also i i always recognize that there's a, a deeper problem with how they go about describing the music there has been times where I do get upset because people can't properly convey their feelings, whether it's they choose not to or they don't have the ability to. And one of the main things is just general literacy. Now, I'm not going to go into how reading scores have dropped over the years or how just in general, people don't tend to like to read. Just your average person, at least in my community, the, the, the music community that I am aware of, vocabulary isn't very dense when it comes to this community. And if we keep it in 100, you really do need a dense vocabulary if you want to properly convey and express yourself about music. Because when you don't, you have very bland and very broad conversations that don't really hit the topics that you're trying to hit on. For instance, let's run a little experiment. I want you to go down in the comments and try your best to explain what my music sounds like to you. What does my music do for you artistically, emotionally? Just explain and don't try to go all in depth searching up words that that probably fit what you're trying to do. Just use the exact knowledge that you have in terms of vocabulary to try to explain how my music makes you feel. Now, this isn't to call out anybody or to make an example out of anybody. Well, it is an example, but it's again, it's an experiment. I just want to see what you guys say. Okay, so moving on, we're still on the same bullet point of uh, my example, my personal examples. Again, uh, a lot of times this is coming from people that are active listeners of my music, but not necessarily practitioners. Um, so that means you listen, but you don't create. And when you're not a creator, you tend to not have the, the in-depth knowledge that the creator has. Now, one of the main reasons I believe that is, is that there's a lack of incentive to learn about music. Now, again, just starting from personal experience, even going as far back as elementary school, I was one of the few kids in my school that uh, joined this flute program to learn how to play the flute. Now, I don't really remember conversations from elementary school that much, but I know damn sure that most other kids didn't care to learn about playing the flute. Now, there's tons of reasons why that could be. Maybe their family just isn't a musically oriented family. Maybe they just genuinely don't care about the, the ins and outs of music. Who knows? We were elementary schoolers. I knew for me, I already had a passion for music because I was influenced because of my dad. He made beats, so I already had the, the incentive to go and learn more about music so that I could eventually get good at making music. And of course, not everybody has that. Everybody has their own life path that they go down and things that they focus on. And of course, either by the nature of their upbringing or just by choice, those kids that initially didn't choose to learn about music continue to not learn about music. And so when they interact with somebody who did learn about music, there's a mental block. It's like having 
an English speaker talk to a Japanese speaker. Of course, there's not going to be very much cohesion because there are two different worlds. There are two different mindsets. Now, I find value in finding more in-depth ways to describe or learn about music. Why would somebody who doesn't care about music find value in the same thing I find value in? They'd rather consume the music, and that's why we call people consumers nowadays because a lot of times music is just seen as a product. And just like most products today, people don't really know what's <laughs> what's in the product. They don't know what makes up what they're buying. You know, I I, I can equate radio or, or playlists on Spotify and Apple Music to fast food. And I'm not saying that in a way that the music is created in a very fast and, and cheap and quick way. I'm saying that again, the, the consumer, they pull up to the drive through they order what they want because they already know, have in mind what they want. They get it real quick and they drive. They don't care about the ingredients in the chicken nuggets. They don't care about what's really in the in the in the patties. They just want food that satisfies them for now. And that goes into my next point of the people that operate these these music stations, aka radio stations, Spotify, Apple Music. They have no incentive to make people care more about the in-depth topics or the in-depth the, the machinations of the actual music. All they care about is getting people in the drive-through and out. So what's the point of getting somebody to understand the difference between house and, and tech or the difference between drill and trap? For instance, I just saw a tweet today talking about the SpongeBob AI cover. I'm going to post a screenshot on uh, on the screen now. They're calling this music and I can't play it because it's copyrighted. I'm not going to risk it, but the song isn't drill, but they call the song drill. And this speaks to my point. Why would they care to know the difference between drill and just your average rap or, or pop rapper, whatever you want to call it? Whatever it may be, why would they care to learn the difference when they can just categorize it as one thing and move on? And again, it goes back to the upbringing and it also goes back to my radio station slash Apple Music Spotify point. Now, why do I put that onus on radio stations slash Apple Music Spotify, whatever DSPs to, to help people understand? It's because they have control over the mainstream. They have control over what people listen to. And you know, I would rather than what we're doing now, I'd ra much rather have people learn more in-depth facts about music, learn about the ins and outs, like I said, so that we can, as a community, as a music listening community, grow closer together because the more you know about something, the closer you can get to it. So that would be things like having more diverse categories, having more categories in general, rather than just top rap playlists, top pop playlists. Let's actually go and break it down. Let's go backpack rap. Let's go drill rap. Let's go Detroit style rap. Let's go Los Angeles funk rap, you know, and that's just rap, let alone any other category of music. Like I said, house, techno, two step, dubstep, whatever you whatever step you want to go with. Let's learn more about it so that we can be more diverse in our opinions and our thoughts and be more cohesive as, like I said, a music listening community. But again, that's that's the name of the game. The DSPs run all this shit. You know, radio stations, they run all this shit and they don't get paid to, to, to have people learn. They get paid for people to listen to the same shit over and over. Now, let's move on to the next point. People that genuinely do not care to learn better. And that's people that are both musically inclined and people that are just listeners that aren't musically inclined at all. And one of the best examples I have of this is, I hate to say it, it's people that only listen to video game music. God damn it. Video game music enjoyers are some of the worst when it comes to having conversations about the overall topic of music, any any music outside of video games. It's 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 damn near unbearable trying to talk to these people. And I know I'm generalizing for the sake of generalizing, but that's the point of generalizing because I want to generalize. Now, my biggest issue with this community is the blatant racism and disrespect towards, let's say, more black genres of music. For instance, a lot of times whenever I go into to sample some video game music and I go into the comment sections of a YouTube video that I click on, a lot of times <laughs> the main thing I'll see is I don't get how people can listen to rap music when when this video game music is the best. Or or uh all I need is video game music. I don't get how people can listen to to so and so. And it's the most unbearable thing to read because it's 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 willful ignorance. It's willful, again, race, if I do take it there, it's willful racism when it comes to things like, like I said, black genres. And again, that's a whole nother can of worms. That's history. That's that's years of, of, of a bunch of shit that I'm not gonna go into in this video in particular. But just know that is a, a rampant problem if you haven't seen it before. One, I'm very surprised that you haven't seen it. But two, I'd like you to go and, and just look around at various, and again, this is big in the in the anime music community. And that's another can of worms, <laughs> the anime community and racism. I'm not gonna talk about it, but uh, just go listen 
or go look for some some uh, some VGMs, some video game music, and see how many times you see a comment similar to what I expressed already in this video. It's it's not as hard as you think, and if you don't find it, I'll be I'll give you a, I'll give you a cookie. If you don't find any comments like that on any of the videos you you find. I'm, and I'm not talking about a, a video with 500 views. I'm talking about go find a, a very popular song and scroll through the comments. I guarantee you will find at least one to two comments talking about this is better than rap. This is better than so-and-so. It's outrageous, but it's real. That's why I'm talking about it. And now that brings me into my last topic for today. Um, general groupthink and how that affects how other people go about talking and, and having these conversations about music and why these conversations lead to homogenized music, as I like to say, the, the phrase I coined in my friend group. Now, I'm not gonna stay on this one for super long, um, but just think about it. If you walk up to your friends and they say something like, um, JPEG Mafia is whack, just going back to the tweet that I referenced at the beginning of the video, JPEG Mafia is whack or um, Sophie's, Sophie's music is whack, what incentive do you have, and this is going, again, going back to incentives, that's that's the name of the game. What incentive do you have to go and learn and mo be more in depth about this music, or just dive into it more and listen to it more out in public or with your friend group? Why would you do that when you might feel outcasted for listening to these things because of your friend's opinions? And again, this is a very real thing. Again, not everybody's like this, but I'm talking about generalization here. And again, groupthink is a very... It's a very big thing. Even if you don't think that you're susceptible to groupthink, you are susceptible to groupthink. And the reason I can say that with confidence is again, because of radio stations and digital service providers. If groupthink didn't exist, or if people weren't highly influenced by groupthink, we wouldn't have very broad, bland playlist categories and shit. We'd have more in-depth everything. But sadly, what do people care about? People care about what's popular. People care about what their friends care about. And usually, that's what everybody else cares about. Your friend group only cares about the things that they see other people care about. It's a very, it's, it's a snake eating itself. It's a very self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a very, um, what's the word? What's the word? It's, it's, a, it's a feedback loop. And sadly, that's where we are in today's society. That's where we've been for years and years. And I don't think that's gonna change because groupthink runs the world. Groupthink is what makes the world go round, sadly, in all aspects. And I don't know. I don't have more in depth to go in on that. Um, it's already a long enough video for now. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hopefully, I've been a good orator today. Hopefully, I've uh, got my point across. Hopefully, you guys had a little bit of time to think about music or think about this conversation. Um, but without further ado, man, I'm going to get up out of here. Uh, like the video subscribe thanks for coming back um i love y'all man i don't know that's all i gotta say thanks for watching y'all can get off the ghost train now much love peace out